Hello, my name is Mikhail Thorpe. I'm the host of the Expat Money Show. And today I am joined by Sven Lawrence of Undervalued Share. Sven, say hello to everyone. Hi, everyone. And hi, Mikhail. It's great to be here in Panama with you and be able to talk to your followers. Well, we've been having a good week. We've been out for dinner like every night, lots of food, lots of interesting conversations. And on that note, I want to talk to you about international investing. So I don't know if this happens to you, but in my world, I get a lot of people who say, you know, I have a Schwab account or something like this, and I want to participate in a global market. Do you get this question very often? I get this question all the time. And I have to say, and no offense to anyone, but I get it mostly from American readers of mine. I have which to say. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. And the way I always describe the importance of the subject, why, why should anyone look at this at all? Why is this even a question? Why not simply you know, just buy American or Canadian stocks? Mm -hmm. If you look at stock markets around the world, you've got 100,000 publicly listed companies, wow. of which 25,000 are in North America, Okay. another 25,000 are in Europe, and then the other 50,000 are all over the world and with a large focus in, in Asia, some of the world's hottest growth markets for a long time. And I have never met anyone who said, you know, I want to go traveling, but I will stay just on one continent or I will stay just in one country. Mm -hmm. For traveling, it's perfectly normal for everyone to look at the entire world because the entire world is interesting and offers opportunities. And for investing, I feel that private investors should just as well look at investments and investment instruments all over the world and pick the best deals that they can find. Why limit yourself to a, to one jurisdiction? Preaching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you suggest then? Should people go to every country and open a different brokerage account in every single country that they go to? You could if you wanted to make life difficult for yourself <laughs> and if you wanted to have some um, interesting local experiences. So, I mean, in theory, to actually give a, 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 an answer to this, serious question. Yes, you can travel to other countries and open brokerage accounts. That is perfectly feasible, especially if you go to financial hubs such as Panama, I guess, Switzerland, uh, maybe Hong Kong, Hong Kong or... Singapore, a whole range of countries are offering non-residents, visitors, the option to open bank and brokerage accounts, which would usually be tied to you have to go there you have to bring also documentation with you there may be language hurdles sure so whether that's really the recommended option for some people it may be mm -hmm. i'm not 100 percent convinced and whenever i get emails from as i said primarily it's american readers who are asking this question i always tell them there's one very simple solution and they are amazed that it exists and then i give them another solution and some more ideas so shall i just yeah, and this is not a sponsored video yeah. by any any stretch of the imagination. But I, I, I spill the beans on the world's worst kept secret. If you are a semi-professional or ambitious private investor, the one brokerage firm to look at is Interactive Brokers, which is an American firm. Mm -hmm. uh, it's listed on NASDAQ. It has more than 2 million clients around the world, but so a substantial, very large number of Americans. It's got a $30 billion market cap and it's got, I think, $9 billion in equity last time I checked. So this is a serious outfit and Interactive Brokers had, has made it a living to offer access to as many markets in the world as possible to its clientele. Mm -hmm. And it's an American firm and you can open an account online. You don't need to travel anywhere. And that will pretty much solve the problem already. Yeah. And <laughs> it's no more difficult than that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what about an alternative? So say that we have someone who, for whatever reasons, do not want to have a US brokerage account. Do you have an alternative which might provide something on the same type of level? Absolutely. And I have to admit to a huge bias. I'm a big fan of Switzerland. As I always say, the Swiss have been doing private banking and safekeeping of wealth 300 years ago. They've done it 200 years ago. They've done it 100 years ago. Chances are in 100 years, they will still be doing the same thing. Yep. It is the world's number one place for keeping wealth and for doing financial Business, if you are a private individual, there are other financial centers that do corporate banking and IPOs, et cetera, mm -hmm, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And within Switzerland, there is basically an equivalent to interactive brokers. It's, it's a firm called Swissquote. Again, I'm not um, in any way affiliated with them. Uh, I've been a client myself for coming up to two decades. Wow. 
I was one of their, their I think one of their first clients when they opened. Um, it's now a large firm. They are listed on the Swiss stock exchange. They have, I think, about 30 billion Swiss francs in client assets. Um, it's a large number of clients. It's a six digit number of clients as well. Uh, they offer trading in markets around the world. Um, also, all sorts of other financial instruments. Um, they were the first European online broker to offer trading in cryptocurrencies. Nice. You can open an account online, do everything by post. And again, then you have a, uh, a Swiss banking and brokerage facility. And you've solved that issue that you mentioned that some people just don't want to do it in the United States or in, in other countries. Mm -hmm. Now, with these brokerage houses, is it only equities that are traded on them? No, it's literally millions of financial instruments that they offer. And this includes bonds, obviously, uh, exchange traded funds, uh, options, foreign currencies. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, Swissquote was among the first to offer cryptocurrency trading as mm -hmm. well. And, you know, no one limits their diet to I only eat broccoli, you know, yeah. and this investors should do the same, you know, like um, graze widely and, you know, um, pick, pick, pick from the whole variety of opportunities that is available in the world. And this includes financial instruments that you can trade through these brokers. Um, I'm not experienced with every single one of them, but it's great that these optionalities are out there. Mm -hmm. So. Give us a couple of reasons why people might want to look at investing internationally in general. Um, you know, some of the opportunities that are out there and you don't have to go into specific stocks by any means. But I just want to get people thinking that, you know, investing and specifically equity investing is more than just the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ or these types of markets. Yeah, I give you one surprising figure. Okay. that I think will illustrate why you should do this and why others are already doing it and why you may be missing out if you're not doing it. So American, US American investors have been scooping up huge amounts of European equities over the last couple of years mm -hmm. uh, in a way that is extraordinary once you look at the numbers. And they've been doing that. And this is mostly hedge funds and very professional investors. The reason why they've been doing this is because Europe, to stick to that example, is a quite intransparent market okay. and it still offers a lot of the kind of deals that you would have found in the United States in the 1980s, but you don't find them in the United States anymore because it's such a transparent, overanalyzed, overgrazed market. And one example I love giving to any audience uh, because it just so clearly illustrates what's, what's still possible in Europe. I once found a stock on the Paris Stock Exchange. It's a real estate holding mm -hmm. and it owns huge amounts of property in Monte Carlo, in Monaco, mm -hmm. the tax haven, gambling destination, tourism destination. And Monte Carlo, Monaco has for years, if not for decades now, been the world's most expensive property location in the world of all. And Real estate in Monte Carlo has been appreciating value faster than the rest of the world economy for decades because, as we know, the rich get richer faster than everyone Deregulation else. Deregulation and yep, less taxes and opportunity for business. Exactly. And you would have thought that a real estate holding that owns the choicest properties in Monaco would be trading at a huge premium to its underlying asset value or something like that. And the opposite was the case. So this was a, a debt-free company with cash in the bank. And the stock was trading at the equivalent of the net cash in the bank and all the real estate came for free. Wow. And this is an extreme example, but these are the kinds of things that you can, at least on occasion, if you have access to the right kind of information, still find in Europe. And I'm a, I run a website called undervaluedshares.com. It says, uh, it does what it says on the, on the tin. Uh, I try to find undervalued stocks. I'm a value investor mm -hmm. by heart and you lose out on these incredible opportunities that exist in less transparent, less analyzed and grazed over markets around the world. Amazing. And Sven has nice, been nice enough to prepare a special report for us. It's on Argentina and you guys can pick it up for free. It's on crisis investing in Argentina. I've read it myself. It's an amazing special report. He has so many special reports on different countries, different stocks and equities. Um, throughout most of the world, I would say, 
over the years now, you've prepared things all over the place and, and all of these types of uh, products are available on the brokerages that we're discussing today. So if you guys want to pick that up, it's completely free. All you need to do is go to expatmoneyshow.com forward slash undervalue. Uh, Sven will make a special offer there for you. If you want to join the paid newsletter, that's available. If you want to stay on the free weekly dispatch, absolutely check it out. It's well worth your time, I promise. And Sven, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And I think this was the easiest problem we could resolve for people. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's good value because I do get this question all the time. And now I have a nice video where I can refer people and a good answer. So thank you so much and I'll see you soon, okay? Thank you.